Hi, I'm Marcus with TheIndieMusicLab.com. So today I'm gonna share a few tips on how to make your vocals sound punchy and crunchy and full and distorted and all that fun stuff like your favorite rock singers do. So let's dive in. Here are a few things you can start doing today to start making your vocal productions sound rockier. Rockier. Okay, so the song I'm gonna to use to demonstrate all of this is a remake of the song Mr. Brightside by The Killers. Uh, so that sounds like this. So that's what we're working with here. Now, if, if you wanna watch the video on, on how I remade this, where I go step by step through all the elements that I have here, I'll leave a link in the description for that video. So go check that out after you're done with this one. All right, so what we have going on here is I started with the intro and then the verse and then the pre-chorus, right? And then the chorus. So let's talk about, because there is a progression that's happening here. It's not processed exactly the same from start to finish. There's some automation happening here. So for starters, let's just go to the lead vocal track here. So lead vocal track is right here, but I'm sending it to the lead vocals bus, which is right here. It's just a thing that I do, even if it ends up being only one track being sent to it. So we have the lead vocals bus here. So let's go step by step and I'll show you what the processing chain is. And hopefully you can learn a few things in the process. So now the first thing that I did here is let me turn everything off is the uh, console shaper inside of Studio One. So this is a stock Studio One feature where uh, this is the same kind of effect that, that you would get from like a virtual tape machine from Slate Digital or something like that where you can get this kind of analog effect or analog sound just to warm up the sound a little bit. And Studio One has that. So I often, I like to add that to all my buses as well as my, my main output. So we get that out of the way. So that helps to warm it up a little bit. Here's, here's without it. Swim. Through sick with it. Lullabies, choking. Warms it up a little bit, brings it to the front of the mix just a little bit more. Now let's hop into the plugin chain we have here. The first thing I'm doing here is extremely light auto tune. It's doing very little. So now, if this was a song that I would release to the public, I probably wouldn't use auto tune at all. All what I would do is use Melodyne and just go and pick out specific notes that need any type of tuning adjustments. This is a rock vocal. You don't want to tune these barely like at all. Minimal tuning for anything in this kind of genre. All right. After that, you want to add a de-esser. So in this chain, we've started with a bit of tuning and now this is a de-esser. Now, I can use the stock compressor in Studio One to get the de-esser that I, that I need. But it's just the price I'll pay. So yeah, that's just de-essing it. It's uh, by using the sidechain filter down here is how you can get the de-essing sound uh, with this plugin. Use whichever de-esser that you happen to have inside your DAW. Now, after that, I've got an EQ. Now, this is the exact EQ cuts that I do pretty much by default because I know my voice and I've mixed my voice so many times now uh, that I know what the standard cuts are that I always make. So keep this in mind because yours might not look exactly like this, but there's a good chance it, it might look similar. So especially the two things that you probably will for sure want to do is one, do a low cut or a high pass where you just cut everything away from about, let's say 80 to 120 in that range. Everything below that, you don't need that in the vocal. That's just floor noise. You do not need that. All that is potentially adding is muddiness and low end to your mix that you don't need. And uh, the second thing is a low mid cut between 300 and 400 hertz, even maybe up to 450, 500 sometimes. This is the low mid range. This is that honky wonk wonk kind of sound where most of the time your vocals can really benefit from a cut in that range. Because listen. Jealousy, turning saints into See, that's the, the range. Swimming through sick lullaby. And this is gonna be especially important because we're gonna add some distortion to this. And distortion, especially certain distortions, have a lot of that mid-range. So we wanna prepare for that as well by cutting away some of that so we have some room to add in some of that distortion that boosts the mid-range. Another thing that I do, and this is very specific to my voice, is a cut at 2K. I've started doing this every single time I do this on my speech vocals. So like I'm recording this into my software 
is uh, there's an automatic cut at 2K now uh, because it helps my voice to sound warmer and not as harsh. So that's something that you can definitely play around with. Maybe even if your voice isn't nasal and it's very warm naturally, maybe even boost it at 2K. So this is not a rule that you have to cut at 2K, but it is something to experiment with. Um, because that, choking see, it's on that your quality, right? Alibis, so, but it's just warms it up very nicely. And then, um, the last thing I did here is just a high cut, which you don't always have to do this. I like to do this because I'm a warm vocal guy. I like vocals to be warm and not too fizzy and frizzy with all that super high end uh, clarity and information. So, but I mean, this is like a 10 or 11 K. So we're not, we're barely losing anything here. Hey, destiny is called. So that's what's happening with the EQ there. Now let's move on to the compression that we have going on here. So now I'm going to go step by step. So this is all a part of my three step compression system that I've developed over the last few months that I've locked in as wow, this really works 95% of the time on everything that I do on every vocal. And so what this is split into, so you have three different types of compressors. I'm using three instances of a compressor for three different purposes. Purposes. Number one is the balance compressor. Number two is the glue compressor. Number three is the punch compressor. So they're doing different things and I'm using them for different purposes. So let's start with the balance compressor here. And all this is, is for volume balance, volume control. That's, that's the only reason I have it here. It's just to shoot down anything that pops through that's too loud because obviously an uncompressed vocal, especially in a rock or pop song is a big problem because of the, of how dynamic our voices naturally are. Just so this helps mitigate he that. So see how it's, it's just shooting down those, those loud parts. And even in this compressor for this specific vocal, I thought it sounded good to where it's almost compressing the whole time, but obviously during the louder parts, it's compressing even more. Now with a balance volume based compressor, we're not trying to affect the sound or shape the tone in any way. This is just for volume and balance control. So what you generally want to do is have a fast attack and a fast release because you want it to shoot it down really fast. You don't want the compressor to wait for any length of time before it shoots down that spiked audio that's coming through. You want it to shoot it down immediately so it gets more of a level volume. And then what you also want to do is let go of it pretty quickly because we're not trying to squash it or hang on to it. We're trying to get a balanced sound here. So that's what we're doing, fast attack, fast release. And I, I like to have the ratio pretty high so it really uh, gets those, those loud parts of the vocal and tames them. So that's the first compressor, that's the balance compressor. Now let's take a look at the second compressor here which is the glue compressor. Now, you don't have to do it this way if you're not able to. Uh, some dolls, you might not have this capability, but what I'm doing here, and this is a trick that I learned from Joe Gilder over, the, over at the home studio corner. Basically, what you do is you bring the ratio all the way down, bring the threshold all the way down, and slowly then raise the ratio. So we've got attack and release, like medium attack, medium release, and then a one-to-one -one ratio for a compressor does nothing. It's not gonna compress at all. But we do have the threshold, the all the way down. So that means if we were to put the ratio all the way up at like three to one or four to one, it's gonna completely squash it. Listen, it completely squashes it because the threshold is all the way down. So it's compressing literally everything. So you wanna use very little of the ratio and slowly move this up. Just until it starts compressing. Off so often dress. this is where I'll end no, up at is one is a 1.1 one ratio. Um, and it's doing about two to three dB of gain reduction. This is just starting to help glue that vocal together. And that's why I, I called it the glue compressor. Now, if you're not able to do this, don't sweat it. Just grab whatever compressor you might have and maybe do two to four dB of gain reduction, but be sure to use medium attack, medium release, right around 30 milliseconds for both. And that will help you get that glue kind of effect for your vocal. So that is the glue compressor that's happening there. The next compressor compressor, like I mentioned earlier, is going to be our punch compressor. This is where we're getting that punch, that compressed sound that you hear in this vocal. Most of that is coming from this. 
So let's go to this course. Jealousy, turning Here has, saints into see, here's without the it. sea, swimming through sick lullaby. Oh, it sounds so good, right? This is an amazing compressor in, inside of Studio One. It's a vintage style, so it has that warm vintage sound to it. So for this compressor, we have a fairly fast attack and a medium-ish release for the settings on this. And we're compressing about five to eight dB. So it's, it's really doing some work on this compressor. As you can see here, alibis. sometimes it even goes all the way to 10. So don't be afraid, especially on a rock vocal, to really put that compressor to work because sometimes that can give you the, exactly the sound that you're looking for. So yeah, that is my three-step compression system where you start with the balance compressor, add some glue with the glue compressor, and then punch it with the punch compressor. Um, I've really started to like this approach uh, because it systematizes it and automates it to a certain degree where I can just use this as my default. So I love that about it. And now, all right, now we are getting into the rock effect. If you want your vocals to sound more rocky, rocky. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just pull in a distortion plugin. Use whatever distortion you might have. Experiment with different ones if you've got a variety of them. Now, this is a stock plugin in Studio One. It's called Red Light Distortion. I just pulled this in and it gave me the exact sound I was looking for. I went with the hard tube setting and, the, you know, just very standard settings across the board here. So this is especially effective. You can especially hear this effect in the first part of the verse. Listen. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Gotta, gotta be down because I want it all. Started out with a kiss. I did it end up like this. It was only a kiss. It was only a kiss. That drive that you hear, it sounds so good because without it. Now I'm falling asleep and she's calling a cab. Well, we it's kind of lost in the mix, right? That gives it that meat. So finally, we've just got two quick things going on here. Uh, I just added an EQ here. This was just, what was this for? Oh, this was for the filter automation. So we're gonna get more into automation here in a minute. But what I did here was I started the verse where that distorted part, the distorted vocal in the first half of the verse is filtered out, as you can hear. Coming out of my See? cage and I've been doing just fine. And here it, it, the it filter releases. It was only a kiss. Now I'm falling asleep. And she's called. And then finally, the last plugin I have here is just an instance of Sausage Fattener. Now, I'm using this plugin as a harmonic exciter. This is to give it a little bit of boost in the high end, and I've automated it to only come in during that big chorus section. And the reason for that is because of all the extra instrumentation, I wanna make sure that that vocal stays in the front of the mix and it cuts through, even with all that added instrumentation there. So that's what is going on there. So I've I've automated it where it isn't turned on here or anywhere else. When the chorus hits, that's when it turns on. It's it it doesn't do a ton, but again, these little harmonic exciters can especially for a big section like this, like I said, it can help that vocal cut through the mix. Again, this is automation. Automation is such a key thing. You don't want, generally, you don't want your vocal to sound exactly the same from start to finish. Use some automation. It'll make a world of difference. It'll make your track sound so much more professional and refined and polished. Speaking of automation, let's dive into the effects sends that we're sending these to. So over here, I've got my effects channel set up, also known as return tracks or aux tracks in some DAWs. So we've got a plate reverb, vox delay, and a slap delay. So these are the three effects that we're using on these vocals. Now, I'm not using any of these for the first half of, of this verse. This is completely dry right here. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine Gotta, gotta be down because I want it all Started out with a kiss, I did it end up like this It was only a kiss, it was only a kiss Now I'm falling asleep and she's calling the cow See, 
as as you can see here, I've automated that so when the the drums and the bass come in, the vocal also gets a lift by adding a slap delay and a little bit of an other delay as well. So let's dive into those, what we have going on here. So the first thing let's look at is just this vox delay here. So we're doing a quarter note triplet, which sounds like this. And I just can't look, it's killing me. They're taking control. So yeah, that's just a nice little delay that's happening there. And uh, I'm just using Valhalla, very standard stuff going on here. And then I did put a reverb on this delay as well to give it some extra dimension and space with a mix knob around 11 o'clock. So that's what's happening with the first delay there. It's a quarter note or a triplet quarter note delay. The next thing is the slap delay here, which I've also automated to come in during this time. And then I think the slap delay stays through the entirety of the rest of, well, of this remake of the amount of the song that I remade for this production. And that sounds like this. Jealousy turning saints into the right. sea, swimming through sick and love. That is, again, it's just Valhalla delay. It's the most basic standard slap delay with left and right being slightly offset and then feedback at zero. So it's just one slap back and we're good. Slap back delays are, especially for rock vocals, are a huge part of the rock vocal sound. So be sure to implement slap delays into your rock productions. Now, finally, there is a plate reverb that comes in during the big chorus section. Taking control. So again, we're doing automation here. So we're automating this. Jealousy As you can see, the plate reverb turned on. Saints into and it's, it's not doing a ton, but it just helps to lift it a little bit, give it some extra space. And for this, I just use Valhalla Vintage Verb, you know, 1.3 on the delay, on the decay time. Very straightforward stuff happening there. All right, now, real quick, before we wrap this up, I wanna talk about the doubles here, uh, because this vocal is, I wanna help you glue this kind of sound, this kind of rock sound together by implementing some of these doubles or gang vocals that we have going on here. So, as you can see over here, I've got these four tracks. They are my gang vocal tracks. Jealousy, turn in and they have a bunch of the slap delay, so I'm sending these to the same slap delay, and they're obviously very compressed just to make sure that they stay pushed down, that there's no popping through of any of the tracks. So I'm sending all these four tracks to this bus, compressing it, and then I have an EQ to get rid of some of the mud in the low mid range that we don't need. And then I'm sending this gang vocals bus to the background vocals bus over here. I just threw JJP vocals on there just to add some quick EQ and compression and saturation. As you can see here, we've, we're sending this to a bunch of slap delay, which, which really helps this sound. <laughs> So the doubles there are not complicated at all. A big reason why they sound so warm is because I put my hands in front of my face when I recorded them in. So they were immediately EQ'd to a certain degree going into the doll. So I, I, had, I didn't hardly have to do any EQ because I knew that these doubles were just to support the lead vocal. So yeah, I would say the two big takeaways uh, to get your vocals to sound like a rock vocal is number one, automation. Automate it, make it interesting. Don't make this every section sound exactly like the one before and the one after, like they did here. The first half of the verse, there's an EQ, it's filtered out, right? And then, and then it opens up for this section. It opens up. We've got uh, reverbs and delays automating to only come in during the chorus. And then obviously the more natural like real style of automation where we're adding in some doubles there that makes a huge difference there and it gives this section that incredible lift and as a third tip because i forgot that i mentioned this earlier distortion distortion is a big thing in rock vocals just experiment with saturators distortions Again, don't overuse them, uh, but you want to give a little bit of grit a lot of times to these rock vocals and that will really help them stand out and be gritty and punchy like the rock singers that you love so much. So 
that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to learn more about production and how to take your song from start to finish and what that looks like, well, I want to give you a plan and it is called the five steps to a Spotify level production. It's absolutely free. Link is in the description. This guide will help you get, like I said, a plan for your next song to take it from start to finish. And I named it the Spotify level production because that's the goal. That's what I want for you is to put is to produce music where it would be a natural fit inside of a curated Spotify playlist. That's what, that's why we do this because we want to make music that sounds amazing, that sounds like it would fit in, you know, these top Spotify playlists. So be sure to download that. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Happy music making. See ya.